Hi, this is Dr. Newtopia, and this is Lovolution Village. Lovolution is a worldwide transformation to a different energy source. And that source is the sun. Of course, everything is really some derivative of solar energy. But what we're talking about is moving to a renewable energies energies that don't pollute, that don't give us asthma, that don't give us cancer, that nourish a beauty within us. And it makes us energetic to do good in the world because we're not seeing pollution all around us. And we know our streams are safe and our water is pure. So that's the direction we're going to in the love illusion. I'm going to show a slideshow about why the love illusion is a global phenomena. It is happening. We are in the middle of this global transformation of moving towards renewable energies. It is the future. There is no other future for us than to move to renewable energies. And you have to remember why it is the future. If you look at the International Space Station, it is run by solar power. It's not nuclear, it's solar. So that gives you an indication of why the future is solar energy. Now, if we go to the Department of Energy's website, which I did last week in my investigation about the transformation, you will see that the Department of Energy started with the Manhattan Project. That was the project that was established during World War II to make the nuclear bomb. Now, after World War II, the Atomic Energy Commission was formed and it kind of took over from the Manhattan Project and it was responsible for uh, nuclear weapons and nuclear and the institutioning of nuclear power. Because we have to remember that nuclear power started because of the chain reaction of the atomic bomb. E every reactor is like a small nuclear weapon. That's why our governments do not want us, uh, want the p proliferation of nuclear weapons throughout the world uh, because uh, it's so dangerous. So this was a weapon that was exploded in the Marshall Islands. It was a terrible weapon. It's an H-bomb. It was called the Bravo experiment. It, it, the radiation from that bomb traveled 7,000 miles. It was a disaster worldwide. And all these explosions, they called them tests that happened in the 50s and 60s until there was a limited test ban treaty because of the outcry of a radiation that was polluting our environment. But the Bravo test actually landed on some people in the Marshall Islands who, inhabited, who were inhabiting certain islands, and they came down with radiation sickness. And there were also a Japanese fishing boat, and they were also caught in this Bravo radioactive cloud. They came down with radiation sickness, and there was a public outcry in Japan over the radiation sickness that these men experienced because of this nuclear test uh, conducted by the United States government. And the, these poor 
people of Bikini, which became a center of nuclear tests, they were evacuated from their beautiful island and the United States continued to blow it up until those people cannot go back to their island uh, at least for, it looks like, several generations. So the Department of Energy on their website, which I'm going to go to right now because I want to show you their vision of utopia. Now you can see this is a image, a nuclear energy student zone. So this is their propaganda of what they think is the good world, a world which is based on nuclear power and which is guarded by nuclear weapons. There's no green in this vision. There are no trees in this vision. There are no flowers in this vision. And who knows, maybe this is underneath the dome because the earth has warmed up so much that you can't go outside and play anymore, kids. This just to me is, it looks like maybe a shopping mall mentality. It's not the kind of world view that's going to bring us harmony with nature. And it is a false worldview. It's a, a worldview that thinks that atomic energy is going to bring about uh, this growth in the economy that just keeps on growing so that there will be this job creation and the expansion of uh, the urban sprawl. What a terrible vision. And so I think that everyone who is aware of what the Department of Energy is doing has got to protest this. The basis of the policy of the Department of Energy is based on nuclear power. And then, of course, they also talk about clean coal, which is not a reality. And then this natural gas. So. Uh, and then they have some renewables. But the transition is for us to base the economy on renewables. So it's a switch here. We have to go into total um, uh, development and research full force like we did when we went to the moon. And we were able to do that when we put our minds and got our m best minds thinking about this issue issue of going to the moon, we were able to go. Now we've got to do this with renewable energies. How do we transition to the renewable energy future? So let's get out of this. It, this whole idea of nuclear power and nuclear weapons. They're like two sides of the same coin. And I put this in because I'm doing research about nuclear power and nuclear weapons. And I had these memories of when I was a young girl and there were bomb drills at my school. Uh, and they this is a school, image of a school, and there is a fallout shelter. And during these drills, we had to go into the basement and put your head down. It was this duck and cover. Uh, the, the civil defense uh, made this idea that, we, that a nuclear war is survivable. And here are some pamphlets that they actually put out. Uh, this is a fallout protection like you can protect yourself from the air being contaminated with radioactive particles. Or this one, uh, survival under atomic attack. Like if you're, you, ha you were at ground zero, you would be able to survive, or you would be able to survive the fallout that happened after the attack. And civil defense even conducted uh, experiments in the Nevada test site where they built houses like um, 
these urban sprawl sort of houses. They even put mannequins in there to see what would happen uh, in an atomic explosion, uh, what would be left. And what they saw was not much. There was just rubble there, just like you see in the images of Hiroshima. That's what was going to happen to us if there was a nuclear attack. So there was all of this fear. I grew up in fear and paranoia uh, in the midst of the Cold War. Uh, it, what a terrible thing to do to children, to have them grow up in such fear. Why didn't we stop this at the very beginning? And this is what the paper that I'm writing is going to ask. Why didn't it stop in 1945? I even watched this film with uh, Robert, Robert Oppenheimer, who was the scientific director of the Manhattan Project. And someone asked him, what do you think about the atomic bomb? And he said, well, it, it should have been ended the day after Trinity. Trinity was the first bomb that was exploded. But the military ran with this. They wanted this high explosive power. It gave them status. It was the ultimate manly power of these phallic symbols, these weapons, these ballistic missiles that could be directed at our enemies. So here is this uh, alert, uh, civil defense, civil defense week. And this was 1956, the year that I was born. They were exploding weapons in the Marshall Islands and the Nevada test site. There was all this radiation in the air uh, and uh, they were ha holding these uh, civil defense alerts. So this week, I started thinking about uh, CD. Uh, maybe it is because this week there were a thousand people that were arrested outside the White House in protest of this tar sands, which is this oil extraction from Canada, and they're building a pipeline uh, to bring that oil to the United States refineries. Well, of course, we don't need that. That's burning uh, fossil fuels, CO2 in the atmosphere. So there was this protest. And here we can see Daryl Hannah uh, being arrested outside of the White House. So CD, what really it means is civil disobedience. This is the way that we protect ourselves. This is the way that we have security in the world is by civil disobedience to the nuclear regime that is trying to brainwash students into thinking that nuclear weapons and nuclear power is perfectly normal, that it's good for you, that you need some radiation to be healthy. It's just not true. The radiation released from nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons is very toxic. It's not natural. These are man-made isotopes. They don't happen in nature. Like, uh, for example, plutonium is one of the most deadly isotopes uh, in the world. And it is cre a byproduct of this um, manufacturing of, uh, of nuclear reactors. So climate change is not in our natural interest. No, it's not. The biosphere is so precious. It's just that our Earth is positioned at just the right location, so it's just not too hot and just not too cold. But what humanity is doing, because we have this fantastic intelligence, but what we don't have is a fantastic 
knowledge of what to do with our intelligence. We lack wisdom. We're a species that lacks wisdom. And wisdom is how we govern ourselves. Now, that's what we don't know how to do. Now, many of us individually know about enlightened self-governance, which is you govern yourself. You don't take in too much, you know, toxic stuff. If you know something is toxic, you don't take it in your body. You avoid getting near uh, carcinogenic materials. That's part of uh, enlightened self-governance. You drink water that is clean. You don't drink polluted water. That is part of enlightened self-governance. Uh, now, our government is to do that on a, a level that's uh, that deals with the common good. And that's what it isn't doing right now. And there is uh, Daryl getting arrested. And they put them in this uh, place. Somebody said it looks like they're putting them in porta potties. And there is Bill McGibbon, who is outside the White House. He is one of the leaders of the 350.org website. He's written many books on environmentalism, and he is uh, being the person that he writes about here. And then we have this terrible thing called mountaintop removal. I went to this film at the loft about this problem, and it was called The Last Mountain. And that's because in West Virginia, they have destroyed 500 mountains with this mountaintop removal. And this is all the fallacy of this clean coal. But really what it does is just it poisons people. I, I came across uh, this wonderful protest. And, and let me tell you, I got these from Flickr, and I thank all the Flickr photographers for helping me create this slideshow today. And here is Reverend Billy, and he is a protest reverend who has a church of the earth, and he is going to chase with the dirt that has been blown up from these West Virginian mountains, and they're, it's all toxic because they, they blow them up and there's toxic stuff involved with that. And he put this dirt in front of the bank because the bank funds this craziness. And there he is getting arrested. So there it is. He's doing CD. Civil defense equals civil disobedience. Protest your rights. So this is the protest against natural gas. Now I saw this movie, wonderful movie, uh, on Nat called Gas Lands. I recommend it. Uh, and this is about what is happening with natural gas and how they these natural gas companies come in and they just pollute the water supply. They don't care about the people, just like these other industries do not care. And here's the land. Uh, uh, in Wyoming after the natural gas people come in. So it looks like this, you know, tumors uh, that have been um, uh, made across the land. Now about nukes. I have been uh, researching about the Three Mile Island, saw some wonderful documentaries on it. And apparently, uh, President Carter, who was president at the time of the Three Mile Island partial meltdown. I knew that he was lying when he went into Three Mile Island Control Center and he said, everything's okay, there's nothing to worry about. He went in there with his wife and his other protective people. And it was just a a lie. There have been a lot of people that have gotten sick because of the Three Mile Island. So Carter just lied to the public because he didn't want to hurt the commercial uh, nuclear power uh, regime. So now we go to uh, Fukushima. And this is a protest recently that happened in Japan. Now, if we had been smart, after the Three Mile Island, we would have shut down every single reactor. But we did not do that because we have a problem with our media not giving us the truth, with our, with our presidents not giving us our, the truth. It's like Obama. He, a lot of the funding that came 
to uh, to get him into office came from uh, corporations that support nuclear energy, which is very big in the Chicago area. So we have these uh, uh, interest groups that buy off the presidency so they can have unlimited power and unlimited luxury and travel all around the world and just smile to us and lie to us and, and make their propaganda. So that's really what we're dealing with here. And here we see some more protests in Japan. And this is a protest in Germany. So this is a worldwide movement. And the Germans government has said that they're going to shut down their nuclear power plants. Hooray. And so is Japan. So here we have our, our former enemies in World War II now wising up. Finally, they're wising up and they're going to say no to the nuclear uh, establishment, which was started in the United States after the Second World War. So they are breaking free of this tyranny that they had been living with ever since the Second World War. <clears throat> now, what I realized, if you look at the deck the uh, Declaration of Independence, it says that um, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. So that's what I'm telling us. It is time that the people rise up the form of government that we have now is corrupt, and we need to end it. We need to start thinking of a new form of governance structure because this old form of energy is killing us. Nuclear power equals cancer. Now, get that in your head. These uh, nuclear power plants, they admit routinely radioactive particles that give people cancer. Now, it's not worth it because we can have alternative forms of energy. We can make ourselves energy self-enlightened. Uh, we can do that spell building a new city design that's really incorporate solar energy or geothermic energy or wind power, all if we have a different city design. Now, I know this isn't typical of the green agenda, but I think it's absolutely necessary that we go into 21st century architecture. These are the works by Paolo Soleri, and I think that if we Put these two ideas together, a new city design and alternative renewable energies, then we can have this mass movement that, that changes our society. This is another example of that. Now, this is to save the earth. This is a save the earth movement. If we can evolve beyond the nuclear regime, and the nuclear weapons regime, we can have our freedom. And if not, we are going to be slaves and we're going to be mutants. Thank you.